It's quite difficult to read the uh, handwriting, but it would say that uh, Dear Mother General said that Major Macaulay is very anxious for, for us to send out children about 12 years of age to Australia and thinks the, the government will pay their passage and also for the sisters who may accompany them. If they could be sent to Brisbane after an arrangement has been made, uh, Archbishop Duig, who is also anxious for Catholic girls to go there, and the members agreed it would be a good thing and that the scheme would need to be well thought out and something but Nazareth House children before and, for, and more but Nazareth House children to be sent. And so he be entirely in the hands of the sisters. I'm sorry, I haven't read that out terribly clearly, but it is handwritten. But from that, you can see that uh, the proposal was put before the general chapter by the Mother General, and she suggested that if children were being sent, they should go to Brisbane and Queensland after suitable arrangements had been made. And we see that the Archbishop in Australia was also anxious for Catholic girls to go there. And this general chapter, while agreeing with the scheme, and felt that it would be a good thing, seemed to suggest that it would need to be well thought out. A further discussion took place at a general chapter in 1925, which we can see at 5389 and 5 to 5390. And the Mother General referred there to the earlier approach two years before. And it would seem that in the intervening period, someone from the order had visited Australia and spoken to Archbishop Duig, who not only approved of and encouraged the proposal, but was prepared to get a hostel for them. But this we shall not require as we now have a large house in Brisbane. The proposal was to send out about 20 girls from 12 to 16 years old. Queensland was favoured because it is a very Catholic state and considered the best for our girls. They would be sent to the sisters home in Brisbane in the first instance, where they could help with the work and be trained more or less for situations for about two years or so. There are much better openings for girls in Australia than at home, and as a rule, they get on better. The general chapter minutes show that the sisters were clearly anxious about the children would be selected, the way the children would be selected to be sent, because the minutes continue. Care must be taken in the selection of these children so as to send out sensible, well-developed, healthy girls who are likely to turn out well. Otherwise, they may not get a good name for Nazareth House and we may not be able to continue sending them. That can be seen at AUS 5370. The minutes refer to the availability of assisted fares, children under 12 going free, and those over 12 for five pounds, 10 shillings each. The major majority approved of the scheme as, if it could be worked out, it would help to spread Catholicis Catholicity. One superior remarked that sending out children to Canada through the Catholic Emigration Society was very satisfactory. The matter was considered again at a general chapter in 1928, and it would seem that a number of girls had been sent in the intervening, intervening period of time as the minutes record. If we look at page AUS 5391 to 5392, You see, it says there that uh, reports very satisfactory of girls who had emigrated under the care of our sisters and being received in our house at Brisbane. The bishop there is very interested in the scheme. A site for a new foundation has been procured in Melbourne. This house might be used to receive children emigrated from the home houses. There the matter seems to have rested until 1938 when a fresh approach was made to the Mother General about a scheme for the emigration of boys to Western Australia. The history of foundations provided by the Sisters of Nazareth record details of a scheme which was for the emigration of boys to Western Australia under the auspices of the British government, the Commonwealth and state governments of Australia. Other entries uh, in the history of foundation at AUS 5382 describe boys being hurriedly selected and sailing on the 8th of July, apparently arriving in Australia on the 9th of August, 1938. There were 25 boys in the first party and another party of about 30 went in the week, week of the 16th of July. 
It appears that one boy from Nazareth House, Belfast, was included in a further group as he is recorded by the sisters as sailing on the 29th of August, 1939. In 1939, two boys from Termambaca sailed on the 17th of February. Therefore, all three boys, so, sorry, therefore three boys in all went from Northern Ireland before the outbreak of World War II, which brought this scheme to a rapid end. The Australian Se Senate report at AUS 2666 records that in 1938, 68 boys and one girl were sent by the sisters and in 1939, 46 boys were sent, 114 children in all. It appears that the initiative for British Catholic children to be sent to Australia came from the Christian Brothers in Australia. In Changing Times, Changing Needs, A History of the Catholic Children's Society, uh, which was published in 2009, Jim Highland states that the Christian Brothers made a plea for 100 English Catholic boys to be sent to the newly established farm school set up by the Christian Brothers in Western Australia, and that, that when the approach was made in 1938, Cardinal Hinsley, who was then Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster, and the Catholic Emigration Association agreed reluctantly to support the idea. We see this at page AUS 1356. Highland reports that in 1938, the Christian Brothers were approached by the London County Council with a request to establish a scheme for girls, and that it was hoped that the Sisters of Nazareth would run a project for girls in one of their West Australian projects, which they later did. What happened after the Second World War depended on the attitude of the Australian government. As the Australian Senate report makes clear at paragraphs 260 to 265, which can be found at AUS 2663 to 2665, Prior to the end of World War II, the Commonwealth Government had been developing plans to bring large numbers of child migrants to Australia. On the 2nd of August 1945, the then Minister for Emigration, Immigration, I should say, referred to the government's plan to bring 50,000 orphans to Australia during the first three years of peace. In his speech, the Minister, the Honourable Arthur Caldwell, said at page 22, sorry, 2664, AUS 2664. Pending the resumption of large-scale adult migration, the government will take every available opportunity to facilitate the entry into Australia of accepted children from other countries. The government has already approved in principle a plan to bring to Australia in the first three years after the war 50,000 orphans from Britain and other countries that had been devastated by the war. Discussions on the details of this plan are proceeding with the states and we hope soon to reach a stage where the full possibilities of the scheme can be properly assessed. When it became clear that the target of 50,000 war orphans could not be reached, not least because there were not as many true orphans as had been anticipated in Britain and in other European countries, it was decided that as far as possible the Commonwealth Government would rely on private organisations such as Bernardo's, Fairbridge and the religious organisations to promote child migration. Neither private fostering nor adoption of child migrants was favoured, partly for legal reasons as the death of the parents of refugee children may be, might be impossible to determine. As had been the position before the war, it was agreed that maintenance payments for children would be shared by the British Commonwealth and by the British and Commonwealth and state governments. These are set out in detail in the Australian Senate report at AUS 2669. And if we could pull up that page, please. That's 2669. We can scroll down. Sorry, that appears to be the incorrect page reference that I have, but in... Uh, in the, the Senate Committee, and it's certainly in the bundle in the pages relating to the Senate Committee, at paragraph uh, two, 263 and onwards, it says it shows that in Western Australia, the payments in 1948 for child migrants up to 16 years were as follows. The Commonwealth Child Endowment was 10 shillings per week, 
The state subsidy was 3 shillings 6d per week. The British government subsidy was 6 shillings 3d per week. And the Lotteries Commission paid 3 shillings per week, making a total of one pound, two shillings and ninepence. By 1963, these payments had increased to a total of three pounds per week. The Commonwealth Child Endowment was 10 shillings, the state subsidy 15 shillings, British government subsidy had gone up to one pound, five shillings, and the Lottery Commission were giving 10 shillings, making a total of three pounds. Considerable differences developed in succeeding years over the amount allowed by individual states, and these are described in greater details in the Australian Senate reports at paragraphs 277 to 288, which I believe are at uh, AUS 2668 to 2671 in the bundle. There can be no doubt that the Roman Catholic bishops in Australia, and in Western Australia in particular, were extremely anxious to encourage the migration of Roman Catholic children to Australia following World War II. In Changing Times, Changing Needs at AUS 1357, Highland records that the Archbishop of Perth wrote to Cardinal Griffin in May 1945, seeking the Cardinal's agreement to restarting child migration. Archbishop Redmond Prendeville was the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Perth at the time, and it is apparent from a booklet published by the Christian Brothers publicising these schemes which ran in Western Australia, he publicly commended the Christian Brothers for their efforts, saying in a letter to be found at AUS 2592 of the bundle, I wholeheartedly commend the proposal to arrange for the reception of children from the United Kingdom at the institutions in Western Australia and commend the Catholic Episcopal Migration and Welfare Association which is to arrange and control the migration scheme. Highland goes on to record that in May 1946, Cardinal Griffin wrote to Card C Canon Craven at the Crusade of Ye Rescue about the pressure he was having from the church in Australia and suggesting a meeting of the Catholic Child Welfare Council to discuss the issue. Significantly, in light of what the inquiry will hear about the experiences of many of those children who were sent by the Sisters of Nazareth to Australia, Highland continues, the Cardinal also refers in his letter to adverse reports about Australia, of which he thought Brother Conlon of the Australian Christian Brothers schools should be made aware. Canon Craven replied that he was not aware of such reports, but agreed that if they existed, Brother Conlon should be told about them. He added that he believed that before any further migration of children began, the whole issue needed to be explored on the spot in Australia. Highland states that at the subsequent meeting of the Catholic Child Welfare Council, it was noted that the Australian government was seeking 70,000 migrants a year, of whom they expected 17,000 would be children. He states, they agreed that someone from the council should visit Australia before resuming the scheme, although there is no record of anyone going at this time. He refers to Brother Conlon travelling around England and agreeing with various Catholic agencies the number of children who could be sent to Australia. The inquiry will hear that Brother Conlon was personally involved in arranging the child migration of a number of the applicants to the inquiry. He was, however, not the only person so involved. If we look at pages AUS 5360, we see that Brother Conlon is writing to Monsignor Craven in England in 1946, setting out the details of the immigration policy agreed between the governments of the UK and Australia for the resumption of emigration to Australia after the war. And the details that I have outlined to you are recorded in that letter about, for example, annually including 17,000 children. If we then go to 5364. We can see a letter from him to the then Bishop of Derry, Bishop Farron, asking for permission to visit the Derry homes with a view to selecting suitable children for migration. It is clear from the material presented to the inquiry by the Sisters of Nazareth and submitted by them to the Australian Senate report and contained in that report that the sisters throughout the United Kingdom sent a substantial number of children to Australia 
following the initiatives by Brother Conlon and others. Figures prepared by the Sisters of Nazareth and submitted to the Australian Senate and which have been furnished to this inquiry record that 1,109 Roman Catholic children were sent to Australia between 1938 and 1956, of whom 775 were sent by the Sisters of Nazareth. The congregation has informed the inquiry that 1100, sorry, 111 children were sent by the sisters from their institutions in Northern Ireland. And if that figure is correct, it represents virtually 10% of the total number of children, Catholic children sent uh, from the United Kingdom as child migrants. If we could pull up the table, AUS 5924. As can be seen from this table, as far as the inquiry has been able to ascertain, the sisters sent the three children in 1938 and 1939 to whom reference has already been made, and a further 108 children who were spread across 10 sailings from British ports to Australia. The first sailing after the war was on the 29th of August 1947 and contained 56 children from all four Nazareth House institutions in Northern Ireland. The 10th and last sailing left on the 24th of December, 1956, containing 13 boys from Nazareth Lodge in Belfast. A significant feature of the distribution of the children from these houses is that no children were sent from Londonderry after the four boys went from Termambaca on the 8th of May, 1953. The inquiry may wish to consider why it was that no children from Termambaca were sent after 1953, even though girls were sent from Nazareth House in 1955 and 1956, and boys were sent from Nazareth Lodge in Belfast in 1956. To date, it has not been possible to identify all of the children who sailed on the 8th of February 1950. The congregation has informed the inquiry that the records relating to this sailing appear to be missing, although there are other documents which show the children did go on that occasion, notably an entry from the Hammersmith History of Foundation for 1950, which is at AUS 5383, and records that two sisters left for Australia on the Asturias on the 8th of, 50, 8th of February 1950, escorting child migrants from Nazareth houses in Birmingham, Belfast, Aberdeen and elsewhere arriving at its destination on the 5th of March. Applicant HIA 274 sailed on this ship on the 8th of February 1950, and her statement will be read in due course. The inquiry will hear that almost all the children sent from Northern Ireland went to Sisters of Nazareth Houses in Western Australia, or to homes run by the Christian Brothers there. Although it would seem from what we have been told by applicants themselves and from the History of Foundation entry for the 8th of May 1953 that the girls from Nazareth House in Belfast were to go to the Nazareth House in Melbourne, New South Wales. Whilst each child underwent a number of procedures before the migration took place, these appear to have varied over the years as the procedures developed and depending on whether or not parental consent was sought. An example where parental consent was not given is that of HIA 330, whose statement can be found at AUS 10783 to 10807. This applicant was born on the 9th of March 1941 and was placed in Nazareth House, Bishop Street. Her statement to the inquiry indicates that she can remember very little about her time there and she was one of the 54 children from Northern Ireland and one of the 12 girls from Nazareth House Derry who sailed on the first sailing of children from the Nazareth, Sisters of Nazareth which left on the 29th of August 1947. She was six years old at the time she sailed. It appears from the Commonwealth of Australia immigration documents that she has been able to obtain, if we could pull up AUS 10795, This shows that she underwent a medical examination by a doctor at Australia House in London, which appears to have been carried out on the 16th of July, 1947, although she has no recollection of this, 
And perhaps that is hardly surprising given her age at the time. But as can be seen from the uh, child migration form itself, and if we go back a page at 10794, the sponsoring organization is described as the Catholic Council for Child Welfare of Coles Hill, Birmingham. And the certificate relating to her background was signed by uh, SR84, who is a, a, appears to have been the mother superior of Nazareth House Bishop Street at the time. She also signed as a child's guardian, her signature being dated the 15th of July, 1947. And we see that her, wit her signature was witnessed by P.A. Conlon, who is clearly Brother Conlon, and he gives his qualification as a migration organizer and his address as at 38 Strawberry Hill in Twickenham, Twickenham. As her ship sailed on the 29th of August, if the medical examination, as the form suggests, took place on the 16th of July in London, it would seem that on or about the 15th of July, she left Derry, traveled to London, and presumably spent the time between her medical examination and her sailing on the 29th of August at a Sisters of Nazareth home somewhere in England. In her statement at paragraph eight, which can be found at 10784, she says that her mother told her in later years that this mother superior gave the authority for her to go to Australia, but her mother was never asked. It would seem that the information provided by the sisters would indicate that hers is one of a very large number of cases where the sisters are unable to provide information to show that the consent of the child's parent was sought. An applicant to the acknowledgement forum only, HIA 336, has provided the inquiry with a very comprehensive set of papers which demonstrate that by 1956, the process had become a considerably more elaborate one. He has not spoken to the statutory inquiry team, but agreed that those papers could be made available to it. If we could please pull up AUS 11483. This is the personal in history index document which shows uh, that he sailed to Australia in the last sailing on which Sisters of Nazareth children went on the 24th of December, 1956, arriving in Fremantle on the SS Strathnaver on the 22nd of January, 1957. The documents he has provided show that his unmarried mother gave her consent to his migration on the 28th of November, 1955, we see this at AUS 11498, please. And although it is redacted in this document, the original does show that the mother's name, who's, which is given there and her address in section B, states that she hereby consents to my child proceeding to Australia on the Commonwealth Child Migration Scheme and understand that the Minister of Immigration will become his or her legal guardian upon arrival in Australia, and she has signed the document in that section. The next stage in the process was that the Sisters of Nazareth sent a formal application to the Department of Immigration at Australia House in London, and we see that that was received by it on the 16th of January, 1956, we look at AUS 11501. We note that uh, HIA 336 underwent an initial medical examination on the 14th of December 1955 by a Belfast general practitioner, a Dr. John McSorley on the Ormer Road. And then, if we just scroll, scroll down through that, please. Uh, if we look then at AUS 11499, there seems to be a second medical examination which was carried out on the 26th of February 1956 and appears to have been signed by E. Walter. 
Certainly there's a typed signature and qualifications there, Walter E. And that's an address on Lisburn Road in Belfast. AUS 11505. It's quite difficult to make this out, but part A was completed prior to the examination. The, that, that's prior to the medical examination, but it records his, his doctor there as, as Dr. McSorley. And it's unclear who signed part B and on what date, but the application is stamped as approved on the 10th of April, 1956. Now, part B is the formal medical report, and the signature and qualifications there suggest that it might be Walter E. Dick, but that's quite hard to, to make that out. And it might be that it was a Dr. Dick who carried out the, the examination. <laughs> 